a web-based remote shell that can access a cellular device anywhere in the world and do an I2C scan. Why not? When I'm troubleshooting Linux devices out in the field, I love to be able to SSH into the boxes to change commands and update things and see what's going on. Plus, despite lots of evidence to the contrary, it makes me feel like a hacker. What am I doing? It's, it's summertime. What am I doing? Most of the time, both now and in my past, I'm working with devices that are out in the field for a long time that need to be battery powered, efficient, very sleepy, just take a reading, go back to sleep and do a thing. They do not run Linux. They don't have the ability to do that sort of thing. And so this dream of having SSH is not there. Like this board here, this is the Elixir from Goliath. This runs with an NRF 9160, a cellular modem from Nordic Semiconductor, Cortex M33. It just, it's never gonna run Linux and it really shouldn't. It's not necessary. And for the things that I do with it, I plug in sensor boards. I talk to, you know, maybe external stuff. I actuate devices with single GPIO. It's simple stuff and it doesn't need full Linux. However, I still want a shell. And so today I'm going to show you a hack project we did. This is the Goliath remote shell. This is made to look like an iTerm that you might have on your desktop, but ultimately it's using Goliath's capabilities and our remote procedure calls to actually talk to devices. Let's just get right into a demo here. So first thing I have to do is I have to add my API key and my project name. You can see the last time it connected. This is actually a device that's live on my desk right now. So as I talk to this thing, I can type in different commands. Let's first start with list and see what's actually available here. Now you're going to see some delays because it is a cellular device here, but we're going to see what we can do here. Let's, uh, let's first just talk to the kernel. See how long this thing's been online, okay? All of these things that we're doing here, these are all standard capabilities that are in Zephyr that you can do from a UART normally, but now you can do this remotely. So this is talking from the cloud through uh, Goliath's REST API down to the device. In fact, we can do the same thing on Goliath's backend. This is called the Goliath console. We can call this same capability from here. This is the device record for the device that's on my bench here. And ultimately it's doing the same thing. Let's do some more interactive stuff though. So let's do something like regulator and see what this comes back with. One thing that's fun is it actually does have some formatting. So it's nice to, to have that in there. Let's do regulator enable. Actually you want to do disable, but it's going to list all the devices here. We even have things like hex color coming back through. So let's do regulator disable. And then let's do reg microbus IV. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this up at the camera right now. What we'll see is we'll just see the five volt regulator go off here. See that goes off and uh, we can run it again. Let me just do this like this, make that disable and enable. Let's hold up the camera, it's back on. All right, great, super easy. All right, power on and off. GPIO, same kind of thing. But the things that I really love about the Zephyr shell generally are things that I can do uh, to troubleshoot. So let's do I2C scan and then the device name is actually I2C scan at A000. We'll do that sort of thing. And now what it does is actually lists all of the I2C addresses that it's seeing on its bus here. And again, this is all being done on this device right here. It's being sent down over the cellular modem, back up to the cloud, and then uh, return this, the shell information is being sent back to this interface and displayed for the user. Another subsystem that we love to showcase at Goliath as part of Zephyr, uh, which is now tied into the Goliath remote shell as a result, is the sensor subsystem. So let's do sensor get to see what devices actually are available here. We could also do device list, but this one is just as easy. So we could see this sort of thing, and then we could do sensor get VME 280 at 76. And then it should return uh, temperature, pressure, and humidity. Now it doesn't really make a ton of sense here, but Knowing what I know, we can see that uh, it's 28.35 degrees in here. No hoodie necessary. The uh, pressure in here is 100 uh, I believe hectopascals. And then the uh, humidity in this room is 30.64% um, uh, as a result. Oh, sorry, I've got this backwards. <laughs> the nice thing is it also sends back data. <laughs> so uh, yeah, normally what I do is I format this stuff when it's coming back, but I guess it is warmer in here than I thought. Definitely no hoodie required. All right, let's uh, look at the other one here. We can kind of see this going live. Uh, we can do sensor get LIS2DH, and this is actually at 18. And this is actually just the uh, accelerometer of this thing. We can see we can rotate this thing. I also put in a uh, replay button here. So we can just do a replay and do a replay and do a replay. And you can see that this thing is uh, sending back its sensor data as it goes. All right. Uh, Last one I want to show, this is something that's kind of fun too. You know, often you want to interact with your devices. Uh, so let's go and do that sort of thing. I can uh, go here and do a stentis update text. Hello. And you can see kind of just the speed with which this, uh, this gets updated here. Let's just do this part. 
So the, the time from when it goes, you know, the round trip time is not necessarily small. And this is not a Goliath thing. This is really a cellular thing. So that takes a little while for it to, to process all the way through. Hello, Goliath. All right, we can kind of see how fast that, that goes there as well. In terms of what's actually on here, you can go and add, like I showed before, you can see all of the things that I compiled in here. You can see things like net, you can see things like, uh, you know, help, uh, memory, other settings that are in here, um, and super useful for that sort of thing. You know, a true SSH often is craw crawling a file system. This does not have a file system, nor would I need to actually modify it, but um, that's something that, uh, you could also compile in as well. So really it's more of a diagnostic feature. It's a bit ability to interface to it. And as you start going to production, you could also use this as a testing interface, perhaps on the production line as well. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can update this to have new capabilities by using our OTA capabilities. This is a different project that I actually have a, a package in here for, but you could go and upload a new firmware update and you could push that down with either new shell capabilities, push it out to the cohorts that are enabled here, and ultimately you'd be able to push new capabilities, monitor what they're doing on the Goliath cloud, and still interact with them over the remote shell. This app actually lives in your browser, but it is available, uh, with the latest version, is available on this uh, web address here, so you can go and pull that down. You will need a sample in order to actually interact with it, and you will need an API key in order to make it go. But once you do, you can start compiling this in and trying different things here. So we'd love to know how you might use this for troubleshooting, for your production line, or even for your product and for enabling your users to interact with devices dynamically. This is all at your disposal, but also under your control too. You can turn this on or off with things like settings, and you can make your own shell customized to your needs. And ultimately, this is all being built on top of Goliath remote procedure calls, enabling your embedded devices to do more. If you have any questions, go over to the Goliath forum, and we'll talk to you soon.